before I forget, but um, Tiffany's our instructor for tonight. Um, I'm assuming others would join, so that's fine. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, this is recorded as well, and you can watch it on YouTube if you decide to do some parflesh. Um, you'll be on the Sitting Bull College, and then um, once you get into Sitting Bull College on YouTube, you just scroll down, and there's many other classes that if you're interested in watching and so forth. Okay, go ahead. Um, hi, where's the person from? Um, South Dakota State University. This um, is Michael. Hi, Michael. And then your name's Michael. Yes. Yeah. And you got two Michaels. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Tiffany. Um, I will say um a lot tonight, just BTW. Um, so I learned how to make park flesh actually from a class taught here um, by uh, Derek Stewart. He works, he works here at the college and he taught a, a park flesh class. So I took the class and learned how to do it and I just kind of really like doing it. So I just start kind of looking more into it um, and learning more um, just by looking at pictures or looking at um, like looking at old pictures. I, I have a few things here for just to show you like, an, a, like a sample of things. Um, and then if you have any questions, that would be great because I don't, know what you want to know so I'm just going to kind of go with what I think you might want to know so if there's anything you have questions on just ask me that would be better um so I don't leave anything out and um I'll kind of talk with you and we have one student in in class today so I'll kind of be working with him a little bit too just so I'll be talking to both of you um so that's how I learned anyways and um, it just kind of took off from there. I have my own little techniques um, of way, like ways of doing things that I just picked up myself or got from different people or just figured out what was easier. Um, so this isn't like, this isn't how you would learn how to do it a long time ago. So just keep that in mind. I've had people that were kind of like, naysayers like that's not traditional or that's not how you do it or whatever and it's like yeah this isn't this isn't traditional I can tell you that um it is a traditional art but the way it's being taught and learned right now is not traditional it's not so just keep that in mind um and you know everybody has their own way of doing things and this is my way so if you learn something from somebody else that's cool you know if you want to do it that way that's fine there's nothing wrong with that um so this is just how I do it and this isn't exactly how I was taught either so it's just like I said little things I picked up here and there that um that are easier or more helpful and um so I got like a couple things here um and then you if you want to pick out like like I guess kind of figure out what you want to make do you have an idea of what you want to make no so you can make like a knife case or um, like a little pouch or um, I would prefer that you try to stick to something smaller just because it's your first time um, just because we want we want to finish product by the end of the class today and then you can always you know if once you learn how to do it then you know how to do it you know and you can always you know, get your own stuff and make stuff all the time you know so um, if you want to pick out like okay so there's this I'm pretty sure this is a cowhide because it's thicker yeah um and it's white, which is really nice. Um, and it's harder. Um, this is deer hide, so it's thinner and it's more like um it's more, thin and flimsy. Yeah, it's so like there's certain things you would want to make with that. Um like it'd be okay for like a knife case or something small. And I actually like to work with this stuff just because um it's easy, you can just cut it with a scissor. Just cut it with a scissor. Um, this stuff, like I said, it's thicker. If you want to work with this, you're gonna to have to soak it. Um, it, it'll so probably about 20, 30 minutes. For um, it to get soft. Yeah, and it'll get soft. And then you can cut it. Um, otherwise, unless you wanna do you have shears here? You know what? I don't think I do. Okay. 
So if you had shears, you could cut it. And then the only thing wrong with that is like, because it's so thick in the material, the way the material is, it'll, um, it'll make it like white, like right where you cut, like it'll be along the edges, it'll be white. And it'll kind of look like, mm, not so nice. Sure. But like this, like I said, you could cut that with, um, with a uh, scissor. And so I'll show you a couple different things here. This is just a big purse I just wanted for myself. Um, and it's just like, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that. You see that? It's just got a, um, like a ledger art type drawing on it or painting on it. Um, it's supposed to be my dad because he's a cowboy and he rode a buffalo the first time he rode. <laughs> so I just wanted that, um, this for my outfit for when I dance. It's just a purse and it's made with the um, cowhide so it's thicker it's it's pretty heavy um and then it's got the leather and stuff um on it so there's that one and then these are also a little i actually made these as like stockings for my house because i didn't have um christmas stockings <laughs> So these are oh, for cute. Yeah, these are me and my daughter's um, Christmas stockings. But these are also made out of the um the cowhide, so they're thicker. And yeah, you can see them. That's why they're red and green. And then these have them. This is a more um a more traditional style um of what was on Purflesh for here for this area for the Lakota Dakota or whatever. Um it it was like this, it's like kind of a, I call it like a geometric um, floral. Cause if you look at it from kind of far away, you could tell like it's a, supposed to be like a floral, a flower. You could see the um, the design of like floral designs, but then it's also geometric. So um, that's kind of something you don't really, I guess, learn about. I'm not sure if there's a class that's taught, that's just kind of, I had to like, look at a lot of bold pictures and ask people and do all kinds of stuff to like figure that out. Um, and then this is just like a little tiny one that I made. I was gonna make it into a purse, but it looks so cute with these things. So I just hung it up with it. But yeah, that's, I was just gonna make it into a little like purse necklace, but that's also made out of the, the cowhide. So it's really hard too. Um, and then the thing with these, when you're painting, um, People can use like, uh, I think they use like the blue masking tape, painter's tape, and you can make it like really pre precise and perfect. Um, I don't like to do it that way. I like to do it, you know, just freehand. freehand. And so as you can see, they're not perfect. They're not, um, but that's just my preference on, on how I like to do mine. Um, I feel like it makes it look more old, like old style. Old style, yeah. It's just how I like it. Um, so if you want to make yours perfect like that, it's, it takes more time. You're going to have to, um, you know, sit down and do a lot of drawing and using tape or whatever to, to make the lines and stuff perfect. But that's if you want to do that, that's up to you. Um, so these are, like I said, these are all cowhide ones. And then these ones here are... Um, this was made with the um, deer hide. And this is my son's cradle board. Um, and it's, see, it's like, it's more easy, like you can bend it easier, which is what I wanted for, um, for you know, putting the baby in here. Cause this would kind of possibly like probably hurt. Be too tough. It'd be too hard, yeah, for a baby. So I chose to use the um, deer hide for this. And it's got the, the designs on it and stuff, um, as you can see. So like the fringe, did you um, put the fridge in and then laced it? Um, nope, I did everything, like everything was done. And then I put that fringe in there and then like I sewed these together. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. I like that, that's unique. Um, so there's this one, this was the first one I ever made. So it's kind of a little bit sloppy. Um, so there's that. Then, it's beautiful work. It's not sloppy. <laughs> and then there's this one. Um, this is the 
the second one I made. And so this too is made with um, deer hide. And then even on this, like you could tell the deer hide was a little bit thicker. So this one was actually harder to work with um, than that one. So, cause the hide was a little bit thicker. So it was really hard to cut with the scissors. Um, and then I had to soak it also. And one of the things you'll see that happens with um, rawhide is it kind of warps. And one of the things with that too is like, you kind of have to take care of it. Um, like if, like when you have it, you have to take care of it. Um, like make sure the temperature is right. You can't have it like leave it out in the humidity and stuff like that, it'll, it'll warp. Um, and then when that happens then it will like your paint might crack might crack and come off. Like on this, this one um, started warping and paint started coming off right there. Um, so as you can see too right here, um, like it's a little bit warped just from soaking it and stuff and bending and doing stuff with it. And that's all, that's fine. That's part of like the, the imperfections of it are kind of what give it its you know uniqueness. So if, you, if it's not perfectly straight, that's fine. Just that's how they're supposed to be. All these are, um, if you can, I don't know if you can see closely or not, but that's all you can see from the side. It's like real bumpy or whatever, you know? So it's not perfect. And that's, so if you're a hardcore perfectionist, you know, maybe it might not be for you to, I mean, you might get a, you might get upset working with this stuff. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Got a question. Yep. How does the cradle cradle board work? Um, like, how do I put my baby in it? Or, um, go ahead and ask Michael. So, the baby sits for? in it, but is it like a cradle that they would sleep in, or do you carry it around yeah. with you? Hold on, let me pull up a picture of baby. Um, I actually, yeah, I just had my son here. Um, he's two months old. And so I made this and I, I wanted it to be a functioning one. Um, so this is solid. I'm going to actually put, well, not this one, but that one back there is my son's. Um, I'm going to put straps on it or a strap and I'll be able to carry it. It's, it's actually, this is actually pretty light. I think when I weighed it, I think it was like seven and a half pounds. Oh, wow. So it's pretty light. Um, it's not very heavy. It's padded in here. This is like super padded. Um, so he just, I put him in there and he's real tiny. He was actually premature. So he's pretty tiny. So I put like a, um, a blanket right here. And then like I put him in there and he's swaddled. And then I, um, I tie him up with these. So he's in there like snug. He can't, it's kind of almost like, um, like swaddling your baby, you know, like swaddling a baby. Oh, I got this picture of him. So, um, can see it. he was, can you see it? Can you see that, Michael? Oh, look at him. He's he was drinking, like... <laughs> he was drinking coffee with me. <laughs> he was being fussy. So I just like swaddled him up in there and he like, he was up for a little bit and he went to sleep. So. But that's just kind of like, um, from what I've heard, um, like what cradle, the cradle boards were for was so that they could be sit, like sat up. Um, so people, so they could, uh, like the baby could watch you do stuff and um, kind of learn from, from the time they're a baby, you know? So they're not like laying down flat. So they're kind of like interactive, I guess, with, with the mom. But I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put straps on here so that I can, actually carry it on back um so kind of like i suppose have you seen like a car seat and stuff well this is our traditional car seat yeah. and it was used functional for the child um swaddling the child and putting in the cradle board um they still find comfort kind of like in the womb still um the other part is like she said um you can um either lay the baby down or um, semi prop them up or you could just stand them, stand them up. Um, the other thing is, you know, um, putting straps on, you can carry them. Um, so there was a lot of multifunction um, 
accessibility for um, your child to be in a cradle board. And um, this is also another thing of, you know, kids don't get, um, um, their heads don't get flat. Um, what was the other thing? They just don't feel jumpy. Um, you see a lot of young girls, and I say this because my kids are all grown, but um, they always say, um, swaddle your baby so it doesn't jump, you know, um, because they need to still feel that um, security and so forth. But yeah, too bad we didn't patent, patent this long time ago. We could have been um, the first uh, <laughs> car seat makers, but um, that didn't happen. But this is a very traditional um, way of how we, um, put our children in, our, our child, our baby in a cradle board. It's pretty cool. Any more questions about that? Nope. No. Okay. Um, so if you want to get started, do you, um, usually what I, one of the first things I do is like, I guess, figure out what I want to make. Um, I have a, I have an idea of what I want to make tonight, just something small, just to help, like, you know, to show you guys. Um, but usually what I do, the first thing is like, I get some paper and I kind of like make a, um, make a stencil to, you know, so that way I'm messing, like cutting this paper up, figuring out what I'm going to do with that before I cut into the um, hide. You know, just to kind of like not waste, not waste the hide. Is there a paper back here, Jim? Right there. Right there. Yep. Um, scissors, scissors. Scissors, all kinds in the bins. See the bins behind you? Nope, in the turquoise bins. The standing one by the door. Oh. You know, if you want to work with the deer or the cow. Yeah, that's the only thing that sucks about it is having to soak the, soak. the hide or whatever. But, um, and so, so like the hide um, we get, um, the hides that we work in the classes here is, um, we have buffalo, we have deer, we have cow, and we've done elk. And also with the leather has been um, buffalo, uh, elk, and deer. Um, either a local hunter will donate, or if not, uh -huh, um, if not, um, we'll buy whoever has them processed. Um, meaning that the rawhide is dry or how it is here. Um, so it's always a process, you know, to make the art. Um, we always give thanks to, you know, our four-legged relatives that um, have given, you know, given their life for food, but they're also giving us material um, because this way now we can make beautiful you know, beautiful work and be able to um, take care of our families and also, you know, give a gift um, or help um, get our kids ready for um, the powwow or maybe there's a ceremony coming up. Um, so there's always a multi-use of everything that we make, um, but most of all, is um, we make sure that we gift or we, we have that compassion and we give to give to others. So it's really an honor when sometimes um, you get a really beautiful gift someone took the time to do and to articulate it. Are 
Are these guys from like a class? Yep. Um, they're from the South Dakota State University School of Design. Oh. So there's 120 some of them that are, um, not everybody's taking every class, but they're, they have to take a class, so. Anyway. Everybody, are you guys on midterms or no, Michael? Midterms are in a couple weeks. Okay. And so that's our do. deadline for attending one or two of these classes is by then. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm kind of surprised not weeks. everybody's on. Usually we have a house full, but I'm sure there's probably a class that's going on that everybody's needing to take. Yeah, a good portion of them on Tuesdays and Thursdays are taking oh, okay. a okay. different class. Oh, okay. Plus, a lot of them of... took it earlier on, so they got it out of the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've had some um, pretty, pretty um, heavy attendance in class uh, of students, so that's pretty awesome. Um, and then you can just ask me questions like if you want right now it's just going to be it's just going to kind of be um not so much talking but more like showing you i guess so if you have questions um feel free to ask i do other types of um art and stuff too so um if you want to ask whatever about that you can yeah, she does some really awesome work. Um, she does moccasins. She does beading. Did you conquer quilling yet? I can do it. Um, like the wrap beading. Yeah. Or the wrap quilling. I just don't. Um, the thing I don't know how to do very well is the dyeing of it. Like dyeing oh. clothes. Okay. Yeah. Um, she. Uh, Shana is gonna teach us. I got sure her. Sure you guys have her dime? Yep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so with um, traditional art, like I said, there's a whole process, you know, from um, we use plants for, um, for paint. Um, of course, through this, we're going to do acrylic. But other than that, um, like I told the students, we use um, plants for um, for paint. Uh, we use the two-legged and four-legged for some of our um, um, essential, especially like the leather, the hide, um, the feathers, and so forth. Um, the other thing with um, traditional art, um, there's a story or um, there's a lesson behind it, or it's only specifically, there's some things that um, specifically are just for men and specifically just for the women, um, but pretty much universal. Um, we can use both um, men and women can use or young young men and young, young girls. Um, and then like the designs, um, we have geometric and we have floral. Um, I wish one of our instructors, she was able to be here, but anyways, um, uh, we have floral and of course where you're at just across the border and up north from you, um, um, they do Dakota floral. Um, it's, it's a really beautiful, um, work. And of course it's a more of a woodland tribe type, but it was implemented a long time ago. Um, so designs are part of it. Colors, you know, just depending what, what, what's being done. Um, colors make a difference. And um, so it's just not like we just make it just to make it. We're doing it because either it's going to be a gift or maybe Tiffany um, had an idea or maybe she's implementing and some designs are still part of families. So the tradition, um, I know of a family here, their um, traditional um, geometric, um, that's been in their family like three or four or five generations. So um, it's not like um, 
they just make it, you know, they do it because they're still honoring their family from way back. And so it's a tradition. And um, what else about traditional art? Um, very unique. Um, you don't see it anywhere else, but we have a lot, a lot of folks that will implement it or um, um, copy it and so forth. And so sometimes we have issues with that, but more than anything, um, um, learning about it is, it's pretty interesting. And then you, you kind of appreciate it because now that um, you know about it, you'll keep an eye out and say, hey, that's geometric or that's floral or um, I know what they, they did with that cradle board or hey, that's a pouch that you use it, you know, because long time ago, um, like a lot of the pouches were to carry our belongings or to gather food or to gather plants. And long time ago, also with this par flesh, we used um, boxes. So boxes were made and those were like our suitcases per se, or those were our ceremonial boxes where things were um, placed or stored. Um, and when we moved from summer or when we moved from like summer to fall to winter, um, we didn't have a lot to carry. So we were very minimal. Um, we didn't need a lot. Um, and as far as this parflesh, have you knows, know of anybody that used parflesh to make like moccasins or anything? I don't, you're not, um, I know that for like the bottoms of moccasins, they've done parflesh or not parflesh, like rawhide bottoms mm -hmm. um, because they're hard, but not, um, I've never heard of it being for the top. Mm, okay. Like for the design part. Um, oh, that's something I was going to talk. This is one of the little like things that I that I started doing, and like I said, it's not a um, it's not. I mean, somebody might be like, hey, that's not, that's lazy. And it's like, yeah, it is. But I mean, it's easier, um, especially when you're teaching classes like this and you want something like a finished product by the end of the class, you know, you kind of have to um, like, you kind of have to adapt and work with what you have. So one of the things that I do, um, is I use um, extra wide double fold bias tape for my edging. <laughs> That's like this colored part here. And it's like on this, like the purse. Um, and usually like if you look at the old stuff, it's um, like wool material, usually like, um, what is that called, Jim? Trade cloth. Trade cloth. Yeah, it's usually been like trade cloth that was, um, put on the edges. Um, with doing that, it, you have to get the trade cloth, you have to cut it in strips perfectly. Um, like those ones, you have to be like right on with like how big they are. Um, and the thing with that is like, it's kind of hard to work with and kind of hard to do time consuming um, because trade cloth or wool or whatever, it will kind of move and warp or whatever. So like if you want a long piece, of it, it's just like, it's hard to do, you know? So extra wide double fold bias tape comes in like three yards. <laughs> so you can do like a big old long, like on this, I, you know, one of the longer pieces is this top part and that's probably like two, two feet, two and a half feet. So, um, or probably like two feet. Um, so that's one of, like a little shortcut that I have that I use. Um, but yeah, other than that, it like the older way they used um, trade cloth or like wool, whatever material they had. So that's just, that's one of the things. Did you, did you figure out what you wanted? I know I'm gonna do it all. Yeah, I can you, do it. So I want like three, I need three pieces, I think. 
two hair ties in the awesome i like that idea <laughs> i don't know if it'll work with the i don't know what you do. see if it's on like that i would use the the, the cow hide. yeah let me that's my first time so I'm really <laughs> have have you done stuff before? Like, do you not do this. crafts? Not, not like with this. Never. Like, do you do like painting or anything like that? Well, just what I've been doing. For like yeah, he's been attending all the classes. So. Oh, okay, because like sometimes there's people that are just like, like they can do stuff. I'm like that. Like, I can like watch somebody do something, and then I can make it like fast. You know, um, and what's her name is like that too. Um, she always comes to the classes. Uh, Johnny. Um, Joni. Um, and Joni and um, Rissa. Rissa. And um, Jim, I'm trying to think of all the ones that have come to the class. Oh, her name is in um, Lakota on Facebook, so I can't remember. Her name. Oh, um, Misty. Misty. Yep. Sorry. But yeah, Misty. Like they, like, they know how to do stuff, like, they've done stuff. So when they learn something that's new, a craft or whatever, like I'll let them do whatever they want because they can do, like they know, you know what I mean? Like they know how to do stuff. But yeah, so like if, you, if you've if you done stuff before, you know, you could you can catch on quick. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. It's actually a little bit on um, thin. Hey. You might look out. And it's yeah. thin. It's thin. Yep. He'll be able to just cut it out. Yep. So cut your patterns. So when you do it, don't put your paper away in the middle and then work on. Yeah, get try to find like yeah, to try to like kind of conserve and not waste or whatever yeah because <laughs> i've had because yeah. i've just had right it. in the middle of the height <laughs> who, who was it never i think it was my tray uh, the tray cloth <laughs> they took a big chunk in the middle and i was like oh my gosh really yeah oh and that's the thing too a tray cloth very expensive yes 85 bucks a yard Jeez. What I found, because I was looking to get some for a dress, and it was like, um, yeah, like 50 a half yard or 50 a foot. And so you have to figure out how many. And yeah, for like a whole dress, it's like five, six hundred dollars just for the material. It's and, expensive. So I was like, um, I don't need one. Yeah. Yeah. When I buy for a class, it's 85 bucks a yard. I bought some for 225 for a yard. That's what it costs? Huh? What it costs that for? Um, that's um, when they make bags or whatever they want to use tray cloth for. Okay. Yeah. So like with that, you know, you could use bias tape or ribbon. It just depends what you want to do. Do you have bias tape? Um, we have bias. Oh, uh, let's see, bias tape. Let's see. We have. Um, it'll be a tough one because when you're cutting out the the hide, should you cut it bigger because you're um, covering your edges, or do you just work? It with depends. What's so, like, <laughs> like um. Let me see here. Like for these things, I just cut them the size that I wanted them. Like, and then fit my design to the thing. For this, I wanted it a certain, like the design a certain size. So I cut the, um, I cut, or I did the paper. Like I made sure that I left room for the, um, the bias tape. Okay. I kind of stopped the buying bias tape, but I bought a bunch of, um, I bought some, you can make your own bias tape. Ooh, because it was just too expensive. So there's someone here, just keep looking. Um, yeah, I put buying bias tape, it's just too expensive. Yeah. You can also use ribbon, like on those one, 
these things here, I just used a thicker ribbon. Oh, not that one. These little purses, Michael. Okay. Not you, Michael, this Michael. <laughs> You're two of us. <laughs> but yeah, so I just put ribbon there. It's like, it was a thicker ribbon, but on here it looks thinner. Or it's like not as wide of a um, border or whatever. And that's the cool thing too with like bias tape, when you get bias tape is it's consistent. I can use this one, that's actually kind of tiny. Oh, that's pretty tight. Yeah. And then here. Yeah, that ice cream. Oh, I didn't realize it. Here, I was like, the one that told me, like, why the stuff to make it? And so I got a lot of fun. So oh, cut out a little pattern and this is my You gonna make that yourself for your or Bubba? Jeez. You gonna make that for yourself, Michael, or for my niece? Oh, she dance. Yes. Cute. And I gotta, uh, she gotta do some bead work for her. I gotta get going on here. Um, oh. What are you gonna make? Um, I gotta do her mom for some leggings, cake, and pretty much all the Dang. And a couple of jingle dresses and those jingle and fancy shawls. Oh, what are you uh, making a bread or all the beat it for? Oh no, I'm gonna make um I guess it's kind of like a bread. But I seen it, I wanna try it. I'm gonna attempt. I've never made one before, but remember that thing that it's like you put it on the back of your head and you put the um your mask on it. Oh, okay. A mask holder. Yeah. Yep. Michael's taking all the classes, so he's going to be busy. That's cool. Have you been buying some stuff? I bought all my stuff for the leather work, like the whole punches and Did you? the slab of whatever marble or crap. I bought all that. Oh my so, god, I, I want to do that. Because it's just like taking classes, it's like stuff I didn't really know that you need to do them. So that's mm -hmm. what a lot of the classes are for me. Like I dabble in a little bit of everything, but that's just something to. And then now you can make belts and, you yeah. need and stuff. It's like, it's all, yeah, I think like a lot of times we kind of learn out of necessity, like, like I never, like you can't afford things, mm -hmm. like I was seeing people when I was younger, like with all this stuff and I got it one time, but there, it's expensive, you know, and now that I'm an adult, I'm like, oh, I can make it myself, 
buy all the materials, which I mean, it still costs money to buy the materials, but it's not as expensive. So that's always like a cool thing to be able to learn how to make this stuff yourself. Oh, there, I got my little piece cut out. And I think to like, to, um, to like worry about, I guess with this thinner stuff is like, um, it's easier to like bend or move it or whatever. So like on this, like, I think somebody set something on there or something and it like, it's got like a little, you could see the little crease in there. Okay. Can you see that, that white part? So like, that's just like the thing where it's like, you know, it's the imperfections stay. or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's not going to stay perfect, but. Hey, my granddaughter gets into University of Mary. Nice. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she's going to be a senior this year. Oh, really? Is your niece wanting a different design? Yet, or she hasn't said. Um, she hasn't said yet. She um already got. I'm already like thinking colors and stuff for her next dress. So another jingle dress. We got a family cat one probably after I get back next week. So I was gonna say um, I see those jingles and I'm like, oh, I'm just tempted to have class, but you have jingles here? No. Um, he said, what's the coolest thing you've made with parflesh? Probably the cradle board. <laughs> cradle board? Yeah. Cradle board. Um, trying to think of everything that I've made. I've made a box. I'm actually um, working on, so I don't know if I can say this or not about the waffle, but. Say waffle. The waffle. So I'm, I have that, it's up for, sale um so there's that and i'm actually going to work on um a little um white case oh cool um, yeah just okay. like a small little white case to put the white like baby white remember the like plastic thing that the yeah. little travel white case to put that inside of oh cool. so it's not wet inside there whatever yeah. but yeah um, and then for this one here, I actually have a box cut out um, for to put like a few diapers and a box of wipes in. And oh, just I just kidding. haven't gotten to doing it because that's a little more, um, making a box is a little bit more complex than like a um, Some straight papers. and stuff. Yeah. Because you have to conform the box to yeah. a box. And then I'm also lining it. So yeah. Um, that's going to be a thing. Like this, this is lined. It's not just, um, if you can see this red material, I have a pellet in there and then I have material. So it's got some more like padding or whatever to it, thickness. And so that box is going to be like that too. So that box might be the coolest thing, I guess, just because it's going to be, um, I'm going to be able to put diapers and wipes in it. So I don't know. Maybe that. I've made like knife cases and, you know, like the strike light pouches and little things like that. So, 
um, when when she takes a, talks about um, a knife sheath, um, back in the day, if you look at old pictures, you might see um, a lady with a knife sheath and she has like a little square. Well, the knife sheath back then was, and I'm the same way, any Lakota woman should always have a knife. Um, it was like, why? Well, um, because out of the blue, you might have your brother or your your cousin, boy cousins, or your husband, or your uncle, or your grandpa. They're gonna bring food to you, and then you gotta always be prepared to um, gut it or process the um, meat, cut the meat up, or whatever it may be. So. This is the honest truth. I actually have a um, a knife in my car. It's in my cubby hole, and that is for just a case out of the blues. You know, um, someone says, "Come help us. We're gonna cut up meat and stuff, and I'll have my own knife." Um, it's kind of like um, how you like a watch or you have a pocket knife. Well, women, um, Lakota women. Um, always had um, a sheath to be prepared to um, gut and so forth. It's kind of crazy to know that, you know, we've had, I've had people say, well, is that for, you know, survival? Yeah, it probably is. But more than anything, it was survival by being able to um, cut your meat and stuff and prep and get your um, food ready for winter and so forth. So there's still things that we still do. Um, we still um, make sure that our kids and our grandkids know how to do things, prep and so forth. So I was telling my little granddaughter this past weekend that um, when she gets old enough, that she's going to be um, she's going to be um, having a knife and stuff. She's going to have to. Um, be able to do those things just as well and I'll teach her how to cut up and so forth. How are you doing, Michael? <laughs> well, um, we're coming up on an hour here for Zoom. Michael, do you have any questions? Any more questions? Is there a special kind of stitching used? Um, for like the edges, it's there's two different ones that I do. I'm not sure what they're called, but like, like on this, it's wrapped. So you can see it's one 
string or one one um lace of leather and it started at one end and it's just wrapped it's wrapped all the way around and then or like this like the, for the fringe or whatever it's one piece um put on like you could see each thing is one piece um, for each hole like one um lace maybe about that long just depends on how long you want your um fringe this one is shorter fringe this this big purse here has a long fringe so those you could see they're just um they're each individual um tied around so there's that the wrap and then the tie the knots or whatever So when you're cutting out the park flesh, how you do the bags and like what I'm doing, do I have to cut out two pieces to add extra weight to them or do I just do one? Like if you want them heavier? Yeah, um, they're fine like this or? They're fine like that, especially since that's like a thicker thing. Yeah. But if you want them all like more heavy, you could use pellin. Like that's what I used on this. Okay. It's, this has like for more stability. Yeah. yeah, I just used pellin and then material. Like cotton, plain cotton too. He said, um, how do you get the bin and the fabric for the cradle board? That's the pellon, right? It's the pellon. Yeah, it's flexible, so it just, it moves. Is that what he's talking about, the pellon? Yeah, I think so. Like how you got it inside. So you use the pellon in the, in the fabric. The way that I did that, so like I cut out my shape like this, cut it out. Um, um, and then like put it over the pellet and then trace that, cut that out. And I actually used like glue to, and you just gotta be really careful with glue because it's wet and this is rawhide. So it'll warp. So you just gotta like, I actually put the glue on the pellet, like spread it out really super thin and kind of almost let it dry a little bit. So it's just, cause I just wanted it like sticky enough to put on here. And so I put it on there and let it dry and then um oh actually before i did that i um sewed the material on one side of the pellet um like oh, just around the okay. edge just a hem the, yeah i sewed the pellet on there or the um material onto the pellet and then um on the other side of the pellet then i put the glue and put it on there and then um then i went through and i put the edge on and then wrap. That glue is just the basic, I mean, you don't have to do that. Like I said, it's just easier um, just to kind of like hold it in place while I'm wrapping. Cause otherwise like when you poke those holes in there um, with those like being like three layers cause there was the material, the pellet and the rawhide and you poke a hole in there. If it's not like put down and it moves then your holes are, your, you know, your holes are gone. You're not gonna be able to like find the hole where you're sticking the the, um, the leather piece in and it's not a needle. So you can't poke another hole. It's um, just a leather wrap. It's just a piece of leather so that you can't poke the hole with that. So yeah, I just hold it in place with the um, glue. Um, he said, is it similar to basket weaving? Um, I don't think so. I've never done basket weaving, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it is. I'm trying to think what kind of art medium it's considered as. Um, natural. Natural. Um, natural um, traditional. Cause you're working with traditional, I mean, you're working with natural hide, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have acrylic and then you have fringe, which is leather. Then any adornments you want to put on um, yeah. adornments. So like sometimes what they do with some of this stuff is um, they have tack. I guess, let me get closer to, 
I'll get closer to her cradle board here. This one has like blue seeds. Yeah, you have some um cones, cones and stuff. So as you can see, um, because here's the wood, and then she has the backboard, and she put um, um, this is uh the red is felt. The red is velvet. Velvet, excuse me, velvet. And then you could tell she's used some sinew, which is um kind of like um. Sinew is like our buffalo. Um, we use the tendon. Um, leather, and of course, this is bias tape. And of course, you could see her painting. And this is, of course, in here, like she did the um, pellon. So, if you Google cradle board, you'll be able to see, understand even um be able to see like how they went yeah and of course she used studs so i'm just kind of showing you all the things that you can use um her purse so like her like i know her um father and so her dad actually wrote a bull a buffalo bull back in the day. So she's honoring her dad. And she likes horses, so those are the tracks. And of course, this is the fringe. But if you can notice, she has some um, cones kind of to add, add to it. Um, kind of like some ball um, beads on there. Um, Let's see here. Oh, her little, her little pouch. So she went to each hole. She put holes in there and then each one was a string or a piece of leather and tied. And then, of course, she did ribbon, and this is ribbon, too, to give it some look. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, so there's all kinds of different ways of them. Um, I'll kind of give you a tour of our, so this is the art room where we're in um we're doing food sovereignty and traditional medicine so um besides the art that we do and then um the pellon this is the pellon we're talking about it's like a really thick backing that she she used for her um uh cradle board and that's our kiln. We do pottery. We do outdoor kiln. Um, this is a lot of our supplies. It's kind of junky. We're still organizing. Got a lot of supplies in here and so forth. We offer a lot of classes. And so, um, um, like I said, to have these classes, usually what I do is I ask the instructor, like, what do you need? What is needed to fulfill the class? Um, yeah, there's just a lot of, lot goes into it. And of course, like with your art classes, the same, the same way too. Any other questions? Well, if there's no more questions, I thank you, Michael, for attending. Um, um, thank you for attending. I will be doing attendance and so forth. Um, thank you for your email. And 
Um, hope to see you in some other future classes, but me and Derek plan to be over visiting your classrooms, um, hopefully soon. So look forward to meeting you. Thanks, Michael. Hey, Michael's over there. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Michael.